Hey, how's it going? It's Jim here today, and I am going to talk about my roles, the results of my testing for the Rad Power Bikes Rad City. This is a 2019 model with a 750 watt direct drive motor, no gears. They have all in, in all their bikes, and with the 40 volt, 14 amp hour battery, which gets you over 670 watt hours of juice. And yep. Yeah, it's a pretty good commuter bike. So let's just uh, dive into my testing. I did more testing with this bike than I pretty much have with any bike, and that's because it was a nice time of the year and I was using it as a commuter. And uh, first thing I'm talking about is range testing, which uh, RAD advertises as 25 to 45 plus miles. So at this time, I didn't do videos on all the uh, like footage, a little clip footage, it takes a lot of time for that video to process and I did so many range tests. Um, and I, what I did is I calibrated the odometer on the bike when I did my first range test. And what I came up with is at 10 miles, the odometer is reading 0.2 miles too high. So it's reading slightly more mileage than you're going, but not by a whole lot. The first range test, I wanted to take it to empty. I wanted to see what it could do. It's not really what you should do. You should try to keep it in that 20 to 80% range. So kind of stopping at one battery or remaining most of the time. So I rode back and forth to work and I tried to ride back there again and I didn't quite make it, but I covered 35.7 miles. I had about four miles I had to ride unassisted. And at the end of the test, I took my thermometer with me, 106 degrees motor and 90 degrees in the battery. And then I, so it was the weather wasn't much of a factor we had you know 57 to up to 87 in my afternoon portion um, very little wind up to five miles per hour kind of coming southwest and that that really shouldn't infect this test at all so that was pretty good i mean that falls within their claim range so i can't complain about that range test number two i did this as more just a a regular day with i did a little lunch uh, outing and so I covered 31 and a half miles I had one bar remaining so that's kind of in the range of what you should be doing with this bike uh, 94.6 motor 81.9 on the battery and I got my kilowatt meter so I was able to measure the re recharge so I got 0.65 kilowatt hours of juice that it took so very close then only so that battery is pretty close to empty during that test um, again, it was a little cooler in the morning, but it got up to 81 degrees and one to three miles per hour of wind, so very little. Range test number three, I decided to do with the lights on the whole time, just trying different scenarios to see how it impacts stuff. Um, on this trip, I covered 29.8 miles and I had two bars of battery remaining. It was probably pretty close to dropping to one, honestly. 98 degrees motor and 84.2 degrees on the battery and it took 0.58 kilowatt hours to recharge. Uh, same general temperatures as the other test, 58 to 84, depending on morning versus evening, because I did these in a couple trips. And then the wind was, you know, not, this is, I mean, up to four miles per hour from the south, which I, my trip is pretty much east-west. New range test number four. And this one I did uh, multiple short trips and I did it over, over two days just to kind of get a different feel for things. Um, so I covered 30 and a half miles on those four short trips and you know it was generally very little wind over those two days with up to 93 degrees, 75, 93, so pretty warm. I don't think temperature is a factor here. The point, then this is the first time I was able to successfully time the recharge, so it took seven hours to recharge and took 0.64 or 640 watt hours. So it does take a long time to charge and that's why I didn't always track the charging because I would often have to leave the house and not be able to get it really accurately. Just something to know, but it's got lots of capacity so it, it kind of offsets the charging time. So range test number five, I did throttle only. I want to do kind of a worst case scenario and I covered 26.7 miles with one battery remaining um, I noticed about a two mile per hour top speed drop uh, when it dropped when the battery got down to two bars of battery remaining. So you get a little bit of a decrease in battery. 
as you get deep into the battery. Decreasing top speed as you get deep into the battery. Um, it was pretty hot that day, got up to 100 degrees, 86 to 100 degrees, a little bit of wind from the south, four miles per hour. Um, you'll see, so the motor temperature is 116.1 with a battery of 103.1. Kind of makes sense with as hot as it was outside and I'm really working that battery with throttle only. And it took eight hours to recharge. At, uh, and it took 0.62 kilowatt uh, watt hours or 620 watt hours. Uh, there's a little variation in time on how long it takes to recharge versus kilowatt hours. I'm not exactly sure why that is. Um, just what I'm, I'm seeing, a little variation. And then the, my final range test, number six. Uh, this is just a standard ride. Um, and so I covered 28 miles. It was 78 to 103 degrees out. So it got real, really hot outside, two to three miles per hour of wind. And I did not take temperature of the motor and the battery after this one. And took 0.57 kilowatt hours to recharge. So in the whole, I got, if you average all my results together, including kind of a best case and a worst case scenario, I got 33.6 miles of range. So that really falls nicely into what Rad Power Bikes is saying you can do. And I don't doubt that you could actually achieve over 45 miles per charge. I tend to ride at close to 20 miles per hour, and that's kind of my commuting speed, so that's kind of what I test at. Um, if you really wanted to, I'll do a test down the road where I you know, basically go in the lowest assist level and see how much of a difference you know you can achieve, but you can, I don't doubt that you could get 45 plus miles, is what I'm saying, and I weigh 175 pounds. I found the motor would be really efficient if you just divide watt hours to recharge by how far you went. I got 18.2 watt hours per mile. I think anything under 25 is pretty good. Uh, not having the gears in there, those the motors tend to be, I think, a little more efficient. Um, not as torquey, but maybe a little bit more efficient. And my average recharge uh, was 620 watt hours to recharge. Just to compare this briefly with the Rad wagon which has the same battery and motor combination I got about uh, 29 miles average with that so a couple miles less per charge with the rad wagon and with 20 watt hours per mile efficiency so the rad wagon is a little heavier seems to be a little less efficient on battery usage doesn't go quite as far kind of makes sense with the weight difference I think so let's now move on to acceleration and there'll be some clips in here uh, from my acceleration tests. And I do multiple, I do four tests up to 100 feet, and then I average that time. I used to do more, try to estimate the speed, but it's really hard to do, so I just have been doing a comparison by time. So for me, 100, 175 pounds is seven and a half seconds, and my son, 125 pounds, took him 6.8 seconds to get to 100 feet. Um, Acceleration isn't exactly the strong point of this particular bike because the throttle isn't super lively. It's kind of metered. Um, Bolton e-bikes makes a upgraded controller that my understanding is it basically allows a lot more of the controller output to the throttle. Um, sure it would make that faster, but for me, I find it's good for taking off on starts. And if I wanted, if I slowed down and wanted to speed back up pretty quickly, I can speed back up. And the other thing is, uh, um, the, well, the thing to note is if you are starting from a stop on a little incline, um, it doesn't, it's not super strong. So I've noticed a couple times where I almost really didn't feel it in that, in that case. So comparing the acceleration to other bikes out there that I've tested and not, that I've tested, you can see where it kind of falls. Um, the Rad City was seven and a half seconds, but the Rad Wagon was 7.9. Uh, the Ride One Up City was 6.9, that's a geared hub motor, and the Luna BBS02, which is a mid-drive gearing, and so that's 5.3. So you can see it does bear that it, it does, it is, it kind of makes sense, honestly. So that's just a little comparison for you. All right, now I'm gonna go into the braking discussion here. 
the same style, I do four tests with breaking and then I average out the results. With breaking, I tend, I haven't had other people do breaking because I'm more confident in my ability to be consistent. So at least all these are relative, even though none, none of these values with acceleration and stuff is absolute. It's really more for comparison's sake because I'm doing the test the same way. So hopefully I'm building some, some really comparison. So from 20, so I try to get it up as, with uh, bikes at about 20 miles per hour and hitting, the, hitting it as quick as I can. So I got 32 feet stopping distance from 20 miles per hour, which felt pretty good, but it's interesting to me when you look here at the comparison, I stopped it in 25 feet on the Rad Wagon. Um, that's really surprising to me because the Rad Wagon is heavier. The one thing I can figure is the Rad City has a higher center of gravity with a higher bottom bracket. Maybe I just wasn't as aggressively braking. I still felt, think they're in the ballpark of each other, like you can stop adequately in an emergency situation. Um, but I just find that result interesting. And the ride one up city, I was only stopping at 18 feet. That's a lighter bike. And some bikes just lend themselves more to just really rip it on the brakes, you know, just how their weight is front to back. So take that what it will. I think it, they, I haven't run into one that's super poor on braking. They're all mechanical disc brakes, so they're, they're all working pretty well. Now on to light tests. I tried to do some headlight tests. I didn't do a great job getting footage on the lighting. I had some camera issues. There's, I'll put a very brief a little bit of video that was at, more at, at dusk. And so I don't know the lumen outputs exactly on the, I can't, I couldn't really find that on the, on the bike. It does a good job lighting your path and alerting people that you're coming. I think more for that, I would probably still couple it with maybe even a rear light on, on a light on my helmet and probably a light on my back or somewhere else I'd probably throw another light on. I do really like the brake light fun functionality. I think it's a nice feature. Um, it, integrated lights are great. I'm, I don't expect the world of them a lot of times, especially on a budget bike. Wrap it up, about time. So in summary, I hope the results of this testing kind of help you out, kind of knowing if the, uh, I, you know, I got to say the range claims match what Rad Power Bikes is saying. Uh, the acceleration is a little weak, but it's for the mass audience they're looking at, I, I, it doesn't surprise me um, for, you know, risk and what have you. So there are, like I said, Bolt Knee Bikes does have that uh, upgrade kit with the, for the controller. I'm not sure if it's all set up for the 2019 model yet, but they had it for the 2018. Uh, but yeah, I hope it helps you. If you have some experience with your range, feel free to leave them in a the comment. All that stuff I think helps people out and that's really what I'm trying to do. Now, the reason I don't have the bike here so sitting with me is I actually sold it. Um, I'm gonna opt for a different commuter. It didn't quite, it wasn't my ideal commuter. And, and also I'm trying to kind of move bikes through so even though I kind of bought it for basically regular price and sold it so somebody got a deal hopefully I don't know I don't know if it's gonna work out very well for me but um, anyway thanks for watching like I said leave a comment if you like let me know some other bikes you're interested in your results your tests what you're getting for range out there thanks a lot for watching catch the wave field.